Hey, what is up guys? So we are going to be doing a deck profile on Chaos Dragons. A really awesome, uh, really easy deck to play and it actually is quite good in a slower format simply because you can kind of play the game at your own pace and at any moment depending on what the situation is you can go for an OTK. So let's go ahead and jump into the explanation of some of the cards that I'm running as well as some of the combos in the deck. I do want to mention really quick that this over here is not my actual side deck it's just some other cards if you don't happen to have some of these cards or if it's not in your budget range to run maybe triple effect bailer you can opt to run some of these other cards uh, in the uh, side deck here. But anyways let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first off we have Black Luster Soldier if you don't already have one of these just wait three days there is a tin coming out that's going to have him in the tin. Uh, next up we have two card troopers. This really helps your deck uh, get the speed you know, uh, up to par if you don't happen to open up with solar recharge or if you don't want to play solar recharges. Uh, you can definitely just use card troopers to you know, really help speed up the deck especially early on in the game. Plus what's awesome with this card, I love point for pointing uh, you know, 1900 attackers and drawing one card. It's just so awesome. Plus if you want to play a debris dragon in the deck, debris dragon is awesome because it can get back card trooper and you can still pay card troopers effect to mill three cards you don't get the boost you're just paying the cost of card trooper so it makes the deck even faster plus you know since uh heavy storm is going to be gone a lot of players will be setting more back row and if you can successfully get off a black rose dragon by you know going debris dragon into card trooper into mill three cards and then black rose the field you can negate uh, a lot of you know back row that you'd actually have to deal with if you went for a much slower play uh, or if you're just trying to go for an otk it's definitely available for you after you know you black rose the field this deck can definitely otk a lot of times. Uh, next up we have one Chaos Sorcerer. Uh, Chaos Sorcerer is great because it is another level 6 monster so it allows you access to this card which can definitely uh, change games uh, plus Chaos Sorcerer you know, just banishes a card plus going into Exit Beetle after you can definitely like clear your opponent's uh, monster uh, on the field. Uh, next up, no Chaos deck would really be complete without a Dark Armor Dragon. Pretty easy deck to uh, understand how to use him, and you can manipulate the Graveyard pretty easy in this deck. Uh, next up, uh, I went for the two Dark Flyer Dragons. This is actually from uh, Thing Chain's build, uh, the guy that topped YCS Philadelphia. Uh, I've always liked two Dark Flyer Dragon. Uh, you can definitely opt to play three if you want to, but I think two is enough because sometimes uh, in this deck you can get cloggy hands. But remember, this card also has another effect where you can banish one card in either player's graveyard. That's pretty awesome. Sometimes, you know, if you bash a Hornet, you know, and Hornet's at one, you can definitely win a game simply because of that. Uh, next up, this is my tech choice. Uh, other players have been playing Chaos Dragons that have top multiple regionals, main decking one Dimensional Alchemist. I like this card a lot, uh, especially if you want to maybe use something like Call of the Haunted uh, to get back um, Dimensional Alchemist. It's pretty awesome as like a chainable thing, you know, MSC, your face on Call of the Haunted. So that's pretty awesome. Plus, what I really like with Dimensional Al Alchemist is you can get back really, really ridiculously uh, good cards like, uh, for example, Dark Arm Dragon or BLS. If BLS gets summoned twice a game, usually you have significant advantage. Or if a Dark Arm Dragon successfully gets summoned twice, uh, it's pretty awesome in that aspect as well. Uh, next up, just when Eclipse Wyvern, just because there's only one real target that you generally go for, which is Red Eyes. Uh, if you do want to play uh, Judgment Dragon, I, opt I will recommend you to play more like sworn but judgment dragon is also an option to play in this deck it definitely makes uh, judgment dragon a dead card sometimes you know it happens uh, but you know not re it's not really a dead card because you always have your light pulsars and your know, dark players where you can you know uh, utilize all the uh, lights and darks in your hands as well um, and keep mind that yeah you can uh, banish one light and dark monster from your graveyard or you can uh, special summon it from your graveyard by sending a light and a dark so like I said if you happen to draw early on it's not th it's not the end of the world basically uh, and you can always banish it later on and maybe add it back with dimensional alchemist if you want to play it um, next up, uh, three effect failure. Uh, I opt to just go with triple effect failure instead of maxi because if you mill maxi it doesn't really do anything but you can definitely you know run maybe two Valor, two Maxi, uh, but I have to say Valor is a much better choice simply because not only is it a tuner card, but it's a light card, so if you mill it, it's much better. Uh, next up, one Aaron. Um, you can definitely drop this card. This card is not necessary, but when I look at this format, it might be a little bit slower. Some players might want to be playing X Sabres or a slower deck, and it's just a decent card. Plus, it still mills three, so it's not that bad. Uh, but like I said, you can definitely just not run this if you want to. Uh, next up, one Gorse because you don't really play back row. I mean, the only thing that can be conjunctional is sometimes decree so watch out for the decree if you you know if you have gores in your hand you might not want to set that decree uh, early on or you can just drop the gores and set a decree don't attack with gores and then decree uh, when you uh, can actually activate a decree in response to your opponent's attack
that. Uh, next up, Triple Light Pulsar Dragon is pretty standard <laughs> for most uh, Chaos Dragons. Next up, uh, Triple Lila, because you know this format is going to be more so uh, people setting a lot of back row, uh, so uh, you can definitely make use of Lila, the Light Sword and Sorceress. She's pretty awesome, plus she mills three. Uh, next up, one Plague Spider. I feel like Plague Spider is still a decent card. There are certain times where if you make a Crimson Blade and you attack with it, your opponent can't really do anything for the next turn, and then you just simply win uh, because of that. Uh, next up, one red is Darkest Metal. I would play two if it was at uh, two, at least. Uh, but I don't think that I would play three even if it was at three. I think two is a really good number for this deck. Uh, next up, Triple Raikou. And the reason why Triple Raikou is there is because you got to deal with Evil Swarm. Evil Swarm is going to be a very popular deck. So I was like, okay, we got to put in Triple Raikou because it deals with Ophion really quick. Uh, next up, just one Spirit Reaper just to add to the Dark Count. Plus, Spirit Reaper is a pretty awesome card. It can stall it if you happen to have a bad hand. Uh, next up, two Torgai. This card is so good in this deck because... You can go straight for a Giga Brilliant, which basically puts two darks and a light in the grave. Plus, he will be 2100 attack immediately, so that's pretty awesome. Um, also, going for Temtempo for more evil swarm hate at certain times is good. But generally, what it's usually used for is to levy or get back, uh, you know, Plague Spray. You can get back all their things to just for like, huge combos in the deck. So you don't always have to go for a quick tour guide into Zen Mains if you have a bad hand. Uh, depending on what you have, if you happen to have a Spirit Reaper to stall out, sometimes uh, a tour guide can definitely make a huge push to where you can actually win games because of it. Uh, to round off the monsters, we have two Trigoda to prevent OTKs, and uh, you know it's a very awesome card, especially stealing monsters is always good in Yu-Gi-Oh. Usually monsters. Are anything that really steals monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh generally gets banned, but Trigodi has been here for a while, so that's pretty awesome. And it's just a awesome card. Next up, uh, Allure of Darkness, uh, Charge Light Brigade, Dark Hole, one Forbidden Lance. Uh, it's just really helpful because this card getting bombless sucks. Like you really need your Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Uh, generally, what you want to do is you want to have a Light Pulsar and a Red Eyes Darkness Metal out. And then um, once Pulsar dies, you can get back a Red Eyes Darkness Metal if it, it was you know destroyed. Uh, and uh, also, you can get back Dark Flare Dragon uh, if uh, Light Pulsar uh, is dead. But uh, Dark Flare Dragon is not as great. I would definitely recommend you to uh, get back Red Eyes Darkness Metal. But if the situation calls for a level five and you might want to go for a Tyrus or any uh, other rank five monster that is available for you, also. Um, but um, next I'll play one MST because I figured, you know what, Decree is here, but you know, sometimes Necro Valley is a card and, you know, I know there's Triple Isla, Triple Raikou, but you know, sometimes you need it immediately or otherwise you're going to lose. So I was like, we'll just throw in one MST, it's, you know, not a bad card, just throw out one. You can definitely swap it out from Night Beam if you really want to. Uh, next up, because it is a budget deck profile, um, you know, I'm just going to say, you know, one slow recharge would be nice. If you don't have it, don't worry, you can still definitely play this deck without it. But if you happen to have multiple solo recharges, I would recommend, I think two is a pretty decent decent number. Uh, you can bump up your Light Sworn count and you can play triple soul recharges, maybe throw in a Judgment Dragon, you can make it like a Chaos Dragon uh, variant of like Light Sworn as well. But uh, for the traps, uh, I just decided uh, two breakthrough skill was good, more Ophion hate. You can see that uh, there's a lot of hate for Ophion because this deck absolutely loses really quick to Ophion. If you don't happen to have a Raikou or something that can stop Ophion's effect, you're going to lose real fast. So uh, I opted for two breakthrough skill and then two decree. Remember that uh, just because decree is out doesn't mean you can't activate breakthrough skill. Now break through skills affect uh, you know when it's activated uh, under decree it won't resolve properly so that means it won't negate the monster's effect but when it's in the graveyard and you banish it it will still get the effect because royal decree only stops uh, other trap cards effects on the field so you can still activate a uh, breakthrough skill once royal decree is already face up but uh, like i said you won't get that effect but it'll still put it in the graveyard so on your turn you can still banish it and you'll still get the effect but if you want to you know completely drop the decree maybe uh run multiple ms you can definitely do that as well, but I figure that, you know, Decree shuts down all of the back row. You can also run a card called Malevolent Catastrophe if you want to, um, but the thing with Malevolent Catastrophe is after, you know, your opponent attacks and you blow up all of their back row, uh, maybe that they still happen to have some cards in their hand. Maybe they didn't set everything. Uh, they might go to main phase 2 and set some other cards, so you'll have to deal with those. And Royal Decree just shuts them down completely, so that's pretty awesome in that aspect. But the thing with Decree, you also have to remember, is they can chain MST to it, and there's nothing really in this deck that they will be MSTing anyways unless they're blind space typhooning your uh, breakthrough skills. So keep that in mind as well. Um, but as far as other uh, cards you can actually main deck, uh, like I said, this is not the actual side deck, but uh, it's cards that you can definitely swap in and out, uh, do some testing to which you actually like uh, better. So you can, like I said, you can go for uh, multiple Dark Floor Dragons if you want. I think two is a great number. Uh, Debris Dragon, we kind of already went over that. You can also go for uh, things like Orient Dragon, remember? Uh, the, there's all this other card. Let me go ahead and <laughs> erase what I typed over here. Uh, this this card, I love this card. This is like my new favorite uh, level six synchro monster uh, that is not banned um, because uh, basically it just gets rid of uh, any problematic card with basically um, 
you know, Wonder Breeze Dragon is pretty awesome. And plus it has decent attack, too. I wish it was like a dark or a light. That would be really awesome. But uh, I do like this card a lot. Uh, next up, if you want to play uh, other light swan monsters uh, that, you know, um, will work for you to search out with like a Charge Light Brigade or something like that, uh, other good light swan cards would be something like Jane Light Swan Paladin. Or you can go for a uh, Luma Light Swan uh, Summoner. Those are the other light swan cards that I would say are good. Uh, if you really want to, you can throw in Garroth. But if you're going to add Garroth, I definitely recommend uh, adding Lumina because you can actually mill more and you can technically draw cards. Uh, but if you want to play more Light Sworn, uh, I do recommend you to might as well throw in like one Judgment Dragon or two. Uh, you can definitely make use of it with Eclipse Wyvern as well. Uh, next up, uh, when you're talking about Maxi, it's a pretty easy card <laughs> to understand how it works. Uh, next up, Tour Bus. Sometimes you can recycle really good cards. Like um, if you happen to mill BLS, you can you know put it back in the deck. Or you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard and kind of mess them up. If they have Plague Spreader in the graveyard or maybe a um, Spore in the graveyard, you can just send it back to the deck and that can cause problems for your opponent. And since the deck is kind of fast, you can mill cards and it just happens to get free pluses. But if you draw this card, it kind of does suck. Uh, next up, uh, Mind Control. If you're going to be playing like a multiple Debris Dragon, I definitely recommend Mind Control. It's an awesome card. You can actually just throw this card in even if you're not playing really any tuners simply because uh, Mind Control is a pretty awesome card to just take your opponent's monster and you know activate its effect or move it out of the way to OTK them. Or since you know Trigodi has the effect to manipulate its levels, you can definitely make use of Mind Control with Trigodia. Um, like I said, if you have more Soul Recharges, I do recommend, like I say, to play, I think two is a great number, but if you have to have three, you can play more Light Sworn too. Uh, next up, Call of the Haunted. It's a pretty good chainable card if they happen to destroy a um, card, tro uh, card trooper or card troopers in the graveyard. If they um, activate MST on your face down, uh, you can definitely activate Call of the Haunted and then chain it, get card trooper back. Card trooper then allows you to draw a card. Another really sacky win harder card, you can definitely make use of Return from a, uh, the Different Dimension for a huge OTK plays. It's not a bad card at all. Um, next up, uh, Orient Dragon, which we briefly went over. Sometimes you can make Star Eater. I mean, this deck can throw out a bunch of, you know, high-level monsters, and, you know, Plex Spreader is a tuner, plus Effect Miller is a tuner, so you can make use of Star Eater if you want to add it, and it's definitely just available. And then another, uh, level 6 monster, or I should say rank 6 monster, Gauntlet Launcher is a pretty good card, but I think that the best one is pretty much Bouncer. Bouncer and Exabuto are pretty much cards that I would recommend over Gauntlet Launcher, but maybe you don't happen to have a Black Rose Starters or something like that. You can definitely just throw that in there if you have it instead. And then Tyrus Keeper of Genesis. I really find this to be one of the best uh, rank 5 monsters. Also number 61 of Vocalsaurus is good. Also don't forget Gaia if you want to you know, make use of Gaia. You can definitely do that. I just don't happen to have room to show you guys here. But as far as like, I would say the main cards that you'll probably want in your extra deck. Cataster. This card is also getting a reprint in 3 days so if you don't have it just wait a few days and you can pick one up uh, later on. Arcanite Magician. This card actually has not had a reprint ever which is actually surprising. But it's a fantastic card uh, to make with uh, Chaos Sorcerer plus Effect Veiler. I mean, if you can go Chaos Sorcerer, Banish a card, Summon Effect Veiler, Arcane Edition, pop two cards. If you're playing a Chaos deck, usually, you know, you can, you know, OTK them because uh, it's quite easy to OTK in a lot of Chaos decks if you uh, have the right setup. And this deck is pretty easy to understand how to play. You won't need to do much practicing to understand how to play this deck. But, you know, on a high level, you know, um, uh, game, uh, it's going to take a lot of thought process to know when to actually make your pushes. So uh, it's a pretty easy deck to understand, like I said, but uh, in order to understand when to actually push for OTK, you're going to need a little bit more practice. Next up, uh, Crimson Blade. This is probably the best uh, level 8 synchro that exists in the game. This card wins games. If this attack goes through against a lot of decks, they simply just lose. Uh, next up, uh, Scrap Dragon. Fantastic card in this uh, deck. Uh, Stardust Dragon is just there because, you know, it's Stardust. Sometimes, you know, it's good to make. Um, next up, uh, Atom. It's just okay. To, it brings out Red as Darkness Metal, but you can definitely play the deck without it. Uh, next up, Exit Beetle. This card is so good in this deck. Uh, basically, two Light Pole Stars or Chaos Sorcerer. Uh, this card is just so good. It just basically gets rid of one monster. Uh, and then there's Levier. Levier, like I said, it opens up a lot of doors to get uh, huge amounts of damage on board. Uh, this card, my Strix and Fantagen, I like it because it gets rid of Ophion. I know, there's so much hate for Ophion. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Evil Storms, but, uh, you know, Ophion definitely ruins this deck. Uh, Giga Brilliant, which we briefly went over. Tour Guide into Tour Guide into Giga Brilliant already puts uh, two darks and a light in the grave. Uh, next up, Photon Strike Bounds are great. Uh, oh, I keep on saying level. Rank 6 Monster. Uh, next up, this card's pretty good. Queen Dragon to Jin. Um, it has this effect of um, you can detach one material t uh, from this card to target one level 5 or higher dragon type monster in your rearward to special summon that target. It cannot act attack this turn and its effects are negated. But, uh, you know, this card's effect uh, doesn't resolve on the 
field, so you can definitely make use of that as well. So that's pretty awesome. And then Tem Tempo for more hate. I mean, it's instant tour guide uh, into Tem Tempo, and you can just get rid of the target uh, or the attachment on uh, Ophion. Uh, next up, just to finish off the XYZs, Zen Mains. If you happen to have a super awful hand, you can definitely make use of Zen Mains. But uh, this is a pretty easy deck to play, so if you guys are interested in playing a decent budget deck, I would say, uh, you know, do some testing. Uh, Chaos Dragons, it's a really easy deck to play. However, I do want to mention a majority of the games that, uh, you know, you'll lose, uh, you can't really play out of a uh, situation in this deck because you can't control what's actually milled. You know, milling BLS and Dark Hole, it sucks sometimes. You have no control over what essentially gets milled. So uh, keep that in mind. This is not a deck where you can actually make, uh, you know, uh, plays. The deck is pretty linear, but there are times where you can do some combos, so uh, don't get me wrong saying this is like a really, really easy autopilot deck. Uh, there are times, like I said, where you have to know when to actually push for OTK, but uh, it's a pretty easy deck to play, like I said. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Asianize, signing out.